Hey guys, welcome back to the musical tour of The Spiral. My name is Nelson Everhart. I'm the composer for Wizard 101 and Pirate 101 from King's Isle. And what we're doing in this series is we're taking a look at one track from each of Wizard 101's worlds. This time we're looking at Mushu, which is the third level. It's part of the original five levels that were in the game. So this track was written all the way back in 2008, 10 years ago. And I was using a sequencer called Digital Performer. So all of these tracks, I have to go back in. First of all, I had to find all the original tracks and then open them up in uh, DP and then convert them to MIDI files, dump them into Pro Tools, and then refine my sounds because my sound libraries have changed a lot since uh, I originally recorded this. So most of it's probably accurate. There might be a couple sounds here and there that aren't 100% uh, on, but I've done my best to, to get as close to the original as possible. So this area of Mushu uh, at the time was called disease. I think they switched it to plague. And the only description they gave me uh, was verbal because this was before the game was finished. So there, were, there weren't any visuals to look at. The description the developer gave to me was the water is contaminated. Everyone is sick. The area is kind of Zen with monks chanting, stuff like that. Palace of Solitude, lots of temples. And then it's a blend of Chinese and Japanese inspiration. Let's take a listen to it and then we'll break it down. Say it with me, and there's the loop. That's the place where it would loop back to the beginning and start playing again. I find a lot of the plucked and stringed instruments of Asia to be really uh, cool and evocative sounding, so I knew I wanted to use those. So the two uh, I focused on are called the shamisen and the kodo. So the kodo is actually the national instrument of Japan. I didn't know that until I was uh, researching a little bit recently. It was derived from the uh, a Chinese instrument called the, the zheng. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now the koto is played, uh, it's it kind of laid across you. It sits on a stand and lays across you and the players pluck them uh, with three uh, plectrums, three like finger picks on their hand and move their other hand kind of up and down to uh, get the individual notes. Now with the shamisen, the shamisen means three strings uh, and it looks more like uh, w what we think of as a contemporary guitar. It had, you know, kind of a, a long, thin neck and a body on one end and the tuning uh, pegs at the other end of the instrument. Played more in your lap guitar style. And it, too, is played with uh, a pick. One of the qualities of Asian folk music that I wanted to capture is that in a lot of Asian cultures, simplicity is seen as uh, beauty. So I wanted to write a simple melody, something peaceful, uh, that was a little bit, you know, it, it's not it's not happy. It's more peaceful and reflective. And then the plague, because the plague's descending down upon the land, 
I, I wanted the plague to be kind of another element of the tune that comes in and, and sort of brings that peaceful vibe down into more depressing territory. So right there uh, is the melody, and then it goes into the, the plague theme, which I'll get to in a minute. But you'll notice that the melody and the shamisen here, because they only had one pick, I'm just playing one note there, keeping it very simple, very kind of stately. And then the kodo... Now the kodo, it's probably easier to play more than one note at a time, so I used more uh, octaves uh, in the kodo track. So I liked the very uh, plucky nature of the shamisen. The kodo is more harp-like. Harp is an instrument that's very uh, present in Asian music. So all of these just kind of play together pretty nicely to create this peaceful vibe. Right on that last note, there's a definite um, bend up on the shamisen note. Now, when you're emulating non-keyboard non instruments on a keyboard, uh, one thing to really pay attention to is sometimes there's uh, playing styles that the keyboard doesn't lend itself to. Uh, in the case of plucked and like guitar-like instruments, you can do lots of bends and you can slide from one note to the other that you can't do on a on a traditional keyboard. Um, and so that makes them hard to kind of emulate, but they... Uh, the programmers of these different sound libraries find some neat ways of incorporating that. Sometimes it's key switches, like you'll play a key in your left hand that switches the sample set that the samples are playing. So you can access, you know, legato notes, staccato notes, bends, any ornamentations and other, other interesting things. In this particular, uh, with this particular sound, which I think is from the East West Quantum Leap uh, Ra library, which does a lot of world instruments, what they've done here with this particular sound is they've programmed it when you hit uh, a note with uh, excessive velocity like they've done like I've done right here it does that nice bend which which is something that that gets to you know more to the heart of what a stringed instrument can do really learning what your sample libraries can do and how and how you can do it and make it sound more real is something that you have to do when you're when you're looking at making this music sound uh, more traditional now Again, I'm not an Asian music expert, and this world is a fictional world, so it's not, you know, it, it, we're not pulling in, uh, influences directly from Asian cultures. We're kind of taking them in and then translating them into, you know, something that works for this particular game. So the beginning kind of establishes this uh, peaceful mood. Uh, I'm using a duduk, which is actually a Middle Eastern instrument, um, but it has, a, I love the sound of the instrument, but it has a very kind of introspective quality it's almost like a double reed version of a clarinet you know a clarinet doesn't doesn't speak out it's it's very kind of contained and and muted it doesn't have a, a lot of high frequency stuff at least in its you know kind of normal uh, middle register and it just in this context i thought it it was a good instrument to express kind of the the, the sickness that was coming out So I didn't want to go too heavy handed with that. That happens once uh, and then we get into a, another area deeper in. Uh, I want to mention these instruments These are called tune gongs. I think these are also from the uh, East West Quantum Leap Ra library. Obviously um, one I used a lot when I was doing kind of world music compositions back then. I have a lot more sounds in my library now, but this this is uh, the Ra library is actually a very good one to get 
uh, to get a lot of world instruments at your fingertips very quickly. So I, re I found this sound and I really thought it worked well for uh, uh, like a, a prayer like sound, like a prayer bowl idea. It's a very bell like kind of brassy quality and, and they ring forever and they ring out. Um, so that's all mixed in there with the with everything else going on. Uh, I'm also using uh, Taikos, which are a large Japanese drum. They're really big and impressive sounding. Especially when there's an ensemble playing. Now I didn't want too much of that. So I, I didn't want it to be too big and heavy, but I wanted it to be kind of in the background. There, there was another track coming up uh, called War for for Mushu that I wanted to kind of hint was sort of out there in the background. So this, uh, this particular Taiko sound also sounds kind of distant. So it's... I wanted that kind of playing through there as a nice percussive element. So the next section I want to talk about uh, is this piece in here. Uh, I needed another melody. Again, I'm trying to keep this interesting on multiple listens, uh, which is harder to do with slower music. A lot of people don't consider this, but slower music takes longer. It takes longer to you know develop a melody or develop you know or develop an idea. And if you only have two minutes, then you can obviously do more in a faster tune right there's more there's more bars to do things in and there's you need less time to get your harmony in on long pieces you actually have to really try and consider that two minutes you don't want to make it too cluttered because it's supposed to be peaceful but it also has to be listenable on multiple repeats so this next melody here uh was sort of inspired by a traditional christian hymn called will the circle be unbroken and i did an arrangement of that for uh, a train game that I did in many years ago and I, I always felt that it was a very pretty melody and you may think that uh, you know a Christian uh, melody or a melody from a Christian hymn in a piece of music that's supposed to be inspired by Asian uh, in cultural influences wouldn't go together but I, I actually feel like they they play together fairly well So it's kind of neat that, um, you know, the folk music of of two, you know, locations that are so far apart can, you know, have similar influences and similar sounds. I thought that felt kind of cool. Uh, then we take that melody and say it again in the viola with some strings helping out. Sets up, up for the next bit. Uh, the next bit was inspired by the tune gongs sound. Uh, and I wrote this piece. And I really liked the kind of open and airy nature of it. If you're not a musician, a, a closed voicing means that the notes of the chord are played uh, with the closest possible voicings together. So A, C sharp, and E would be like that. But what I've, what I've done here by spreading, uh, spreading it out is a very different presentation of the chord. It's got different qualities. So this is the closed voicing, and then here's open, right? Obviously a, a, a much uh, more open sound. And I, I really like what that does to a harmony, especially in strings and it's, it's harps here and the gongs. It, it just gives a lot more space for the ear to hear different things going on. I originally wrote this melody uh, in, for the tune gongs, and so I played it one way with the tune gongs. Which I thought was really pretty. Then I wanted to double that with the harp, but in the harp, I didn't hold that second chord, that A, long enough and continued with the melody. So I made a mistake here, but I actually thought it sounded pretty good. And I liked the way all of these notes kind of playing you know, in different parts of the melody sounded, uh, sounded good. So 
So that melody took it to kind of a lighter, you know, more peaceful place. But then I needed to bring back in the uh, the sickness, the plague again. So took it back into the kind of tragic plague place where we, that we were exploring before. There's really, you know, this whole section is kind of the same thing happening over and over and over again. But because we're adding elements to it, 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 it doesn't sound like the same thing. It sounds like there's new information kind of at every, uh, at every turn. So at, right off the beginning, the violins playing, then the violas come in. An octave down. And then the cello, another octave below that. So we built up to a very big place and it's really just the same thing and I modulated it to a different key uh, halfway through there. But I like the way that that uh, developed just by adding different instruments going through there. Obviously when you're going to some more epic, uh, choirs uh, usually help. So we got all that going on with these violin, uh, with these strings here. And I think that Duke's back in there to get that plaintive voice back in. Hey, all right, my long guy's here. <laughs> just in time okay well i guess that uh i guess with that i'll sign off on this one so thanks to everybody who suggested that we take a look at a mushu track uh please leave a comment below let me know what you want to see next we will hit that next on the musical tour of the spiral thanks <laughs>